Buster Posey is on my short list for of those guys, of those people that have best represented the university, not only with athletic prowess, but character and dignity. And then obviously what he's done off the field of play as well. For those that are of the younger demo that listen to the Jeff Cameron that maybe don't know, here you go. He was a two-time first team All-American for the Knowles in 2007 and 2008. He won almost every award you could possibly win in the game of baseball, including the most prestigious, which is the Golden Spikes Award. He won that. He won the Dick Hauser Trophy as well. He won the Brooks Wallace, the Johnny Bench. He was uh, Player of the Year, according to Baseball America. He uh, was also Player of the Year, according to Collegiate Baseball. Rivals.com in his junior season. He uh, he earned All-American honors as a freshman in 2006. People forget this part of it as a shortstop. And that was before he got moved behind the plate, before Mike Martin Jr. took him under his wing and said, you know, you've got the footwork, you've got the arm strength, you've got the athleticism. I think you could make the transition very easily. It worked out. He made the transition not only easily, but he became uh, a dominant player behind the plate. Uh, His records uh, are uh, immense. We could go on for days, but here you go in short. Consensus All-American junior season, including leading the nation in six offensive categories, batting average, hits, RBIs, total bases, on-base percentage, slugging percentage. His batting average was the highest recorded in a single season in Seminole baseball history. I remember watching John Ford Griffin play here. I remember watching J.D. Drew play here. I remember thinking that nobody would live up to those offensive numbers, that nobody would hit for a better average than John Ford Griffin, that nobody would hit for the kind of power that J.D. Drew had combined with average. I used to think, well, how lucky was I to see both those gentlemen play the game of baseball, and then along came Buster Posey and that magical season in which he, again, hit 463 with 119 hits, 93 RBIs, 226 total bases. It's insane with an on-base percentage uh, that is north of 550. Uh, a slugging percentage at almost a th- almost 900. He was insane. Um, so he, FSU went to the College World Series in 08, the Knowles' first trip to Omaha at that time since 2000. So it was really important that he be that kind of great. He led the ACC in eight categories. He was named 2008 Player of the Year became just the fourth player in ACC history to capture the Triple Crown. So he led the league in batting average, home runs. He had 26 of those. I remember that. Uh, And RBIs, seven-time All-Star once he gets to Major League Baseball with the San Francisco Giants. He was Rookie of the Year in 2010. I remember this conversation about whether the Rays were going to draft him or if they were going to go another route, they went another route. And to this day, I think Rays fans have always wondered, oh, what could have been with Buster Posey in our own backyard. Uh, he was the 2012 National League MVP. Go back to 2010 Rookie of the Year, and let me say this about Buster Posey. He was playing at a ballpark in the minors that was very conducive um, uh, to to doubles. And, and a lot of the conversation was, you know, is he ever going to have – big league power? Is he ever going to make the transition? Because in truth, uh, in his career here at Florida State, he went from having a very good offensive season, but nothing spectacular, nothing that you would, you know, sit in awe of, to having this massive leap where doubles power became home run power. So he could always hit to all fields, and he had that doubles power, but he ended up, I remember Corey Clark and I, And we were joking. This was in jest. But we were saying if Buster Posey had been a major league player and gone from the season that he had prior to that monster season in which I just laid out all the stats, if Buster Posey had been a major league player fresh off the steroid era, we would have gone, hmm, so we're going from 6 to 26 home runs, are we? But in truth, when you're talking about younger players, if a guy comes in his freshman year or sophomore year and he has – power to all fields, but the ball's hitting off the base of the wall, hitting off the middle of the wall, and he's hitting a lot of doubles and triples as opposed to home runs, it only makes sense that soon, another year in the strength and conditioning program, putting on your your grown-up, your your man weight, as they say, as you get a little bit older in college, it would translate to more power because the eye-hand coordination is already there. Uh, The ability to hit for average, to put back to ball, is consistently there. You have power. It's just not fully realized power at that point. So back to what we said. Yeah, 
in both cases, he went from being a guy that could hit to all fields and did so many different things defensively, and he was also versatile in that you could put him at first base or shortstop. Hell, he could play every position in college and once did. All of those things are true, but he also pitched. Um, he's one of these guys that in the pros, it translated as well with a wooden bat, and he made it happen. So back to some of the numbers uh, that stand out. 2010 Rookie of the Year. 2012 Buster Posey was the National League MVP. He's a five-time Silver Slugger Award winner, 2016 Golden Glove winner as well. So you're seeing the offense and the best of the best at the position with those Silver Slugger Awards. And then you're seeing the defense with the Gold Glove Award. He won the World Series with the Giants in 2010. He won it in 2012. Now think about this. He's a rookie in 2010, and they win the World Series and many of those veteran pitchers credit him and his ability to call a game, control a game from behind the plate for their success. He wins the World Series again in 2012. Wins the World Series again. He's on a team that does, certainly, in 2014. He retires after the 2021 season most recently. By the way, he hit 304 in that season. So he went out with a bang, won his second Comeback Player of the Year award. You remember the first one was after he got collided into. It ended up changing the rules of baseball. That was Marlins Giants. Guy took him out at the plate. Back then, that was a legal play. Uh, it resulted in an ugly injury for Buster Posey. He bounced back from that, ended up winning uh, Comeback Player of the Year, and then he did it again. Uh, so this is a guy who... I saw a play first base when I saw the Nats Giants, when I took my kids to their first baseball game up there uh, and played it really well, made a backhand stop off of first that saved the game for the Giants that day. I really feel like had he come out from behind the plate a little bit sooner, he may have been able to prolong his career even more. Uh, so second comeback player of the year, year award there, made his seventh all-star team, led the Giants to a team record 107 wins that season, his final. His jersey will be just the fourth retired in this storied history of Seminole baseball. Um, think about what it is. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, joining Dick Hauser and J.D. Drew and, of course, Mike Martin uh, as the only other Seminoles to ever have their jersey retired. So congratulations to Buster Posey once again. Jersey retired. Buster Posey started the Seminoles game against Pitt. That is in March. Make your plans now. You're going to want to be here for that. Tickets for baseball do go on sale on Monday. I still, I, I think about it. Uh, being in the stands, I would, I would talk about Buster Posey one final way. He's a quiet guy. Doesn't say a lot for a man who's accomplished as much as he has. He's a very kind and giving man uh, as well. And um, Saw him. I was I was fortunate enough to be down on the field at batting practice before a San Francisco game. I had taken my dad. He's a lifelong Giants fan, San Francisco Giants fan. And we got down on the field and got to meet some players. And uh, I'll be forever indebted to uh, to a Seminole who works out there with the Giants that set it all up. And uh, he came over and, and took a picture and shook hands with my dad. And my dad got to put on the World Series ring. And there are countless stories like that about Buster Posey. Um, I mean, you can't, I, I don't know. I could, we could do two hours and I'll probably do more on Buster Posey as the days get closer. I want to talk to Chip Baker about him, of course, and just, we can go on and on and on. Um, but Buster was a guy and it, I, I never missed a game when he was here. Uh, you, you, you couldn't afford to, you wanted to go to every game just to see what he was going to do next. So Buster was literally a guy that brought people to the yard. But when you sat with people who knew the game, it was very, very odd, almost eerie. If Florida State needed something offensively in a game, whether that was to move a runner over and ground the ball to the other side to advance a base, whether that was to come hell or high water in this situation, at the very least, we need a sack fly. Whether that was, you know what? Nothing but a hit will do here. You've got it. We have to have a single. We've got to have something here to tie the game up in the late innings. Okay, we've got to have a home run. <laughs> this is it. It's the ninth inning. It's the eighth inning. Uh, the, this is the last we're going to see of Buster Posey. We're down three. There's two on. You're going to need a home run here to tie this game up and give yourself a chance to win it. And Buster Posey hit whatever was necessary. It was uncanny. It was bizarre. I remember a super regional game against the University of Florida 
uh, or regional game against the University of Florida, where Florida got up early and Florida State was the more uh, well thought of team. And Buster Posey led the way in the comeback, I believe, with the Grand Slam. It just always seemed whatever you had to have, Buster Posey provided. And I know that sounds crazy and superhero ish, but those of you listening to me that shared a seat in the stands at Dick Hauser Stadium, Mike Martin Field, while Buster Posey's career played out, you know of which I speak. That's what Buster Posey did for Florida State. Great honor, past due, get him up there.